Jeff, I'm not happy. I want a divorce. Jeff was taken surprised, but not completely off guard. They had been married for nearly 20 years, but Darlene had recently confided in her friend and self-proclaimed marital guru, Miranda. Miranda's knowledge stems from her three divorces. Jeff, are you listening? I want a divorce. Yes, I heard you, sweetie. But this is a serious issue, and I do not want to rush my response. I believe I've been a loving, dedicated spouse and father. You haven't stated anything about our bed life, so I'm not sure what's wrong. However, after hearing your remarks, I have decided that I cannot endure the prospect of our marriage jeopardizing your happiness, no matter how painful it is. I will support you in this divorce. But I'm curious if this is a fresh issue or one that has been fermenting for some time. Darlene replied, Yes, gradually. I need some space and time to pursue other chances and meet new people. As far as I know, the court requires that we be officially separated within 90 days after signing the paperwork. Maybe someday I'll change my mind and wish to stay married. We might not need to get divorced, Jeff pondered. That's consistent with what I've heard from others going through divorce during the 90-day separation period. We may both date other people without being considered cheaters. However, in order to put the divorce on hold, we must both agree. However, either of us may proceed with the divorce without the other's approval. Jeff understood Darlene didn't understand that he had the same freedom as her. I assumed that if I filed the paperwork first, I would be able to decide whether to prolong the marriage or file for divorce. Darlene hesitated. Jeff objected. I don't think that's fair. However, just to be clear, I will also file so that we are on equal footing. Does that sound reasonable? Darlene stuttered. I suppose. Are you hinting that you want to get divorced? It appears that I incorrectly assumed I was doing the duties of a suitable husband, father, and partner. No, I am not seeking a divorce, but I will not hinder your future, sweetheart. I never suggested you were inadequate. You have been an exceptional husband, father, and partner. I simply want to have new experiences and spend time with others. It might bring me some satisfaction. I just need some space. Legal separation will give me that freedom. Darlene, the fact that you require more than I can supply demonstrates my weaknesses. He paused slightly before continuing. Have you previously talked with a lawyer and finished the paperwork? She dismissed his comment about feeling inadequate. No, I have not received the docs yet. I plan to hire Junior Lewis. He handled Miranda's divorce cases. Thus, Darlene verified Miranda's influence in wanting more from their marriage. I'll probably hire my cousin Sally to handle my end of the divorce. Sally, a real nightmare. I know you don't like Sally, but she is genuinely kind-hearted. Her aggressive reputation stems from her career, where she zealously advocates for her clients, regardless of gender. Interestingly, during the previous family gathering, most likely owing to too many cocktails, Sally promised to defend me for free if I ever needed a divorce lawyer. Wow, Jeff continued. We need to talk about something. I recommend that you take the next two weeks to prepare for your divorce. That way, we may begin our separation on the first of the month. Okay. That works. But I'm not sure why we should do anything until the separation time finishes, Jeff clarified. So I believe the goal of the separation is to see what life might be like after divorce, to help us decide if that is truly what we want. As a result, this time apart should be used as a trial run for life after divorce. Otherwise, we may not get any clarity until the divorce, which might be nasty. Does this make sense to you? Maybe. I hadn't really considered it. Darlene's determination started to falter. How about this? Let's go to the kitchen, get a notepad, and begin outlining what we need to do. I'll brew some coffee. With those remarks, Jeff left the bed and went to the kitchen, leaving Darlene to think. When Darlene came in the kitchen, the coffee was already boiling and Jeff was taking notes. All right, Jeff resumed. There's so much to consider. It's hard to know where to start. I believe we should start by discussing the children. What do you mean? Darlene inquired. We'll need to explain the issue to them, make sure we're both communicating the same message, and reassure them that our divorce isn't their fault, Jeff explained. Darlene expressed fear about revealing the news to their daughters, implying that they might not take it well and questioning the necessity to tell them so soon. She advised waiting 90 days and potentially not telling them at all. Jeff countered, stating that they needed a strategy for dealing with his daughter's inevitable queries about the split. 
He recommended that Darlene stay in the house during the separation, allowing them to keep the children's lives as normal as possible while also spending time together on occasion. Darlene was unconvinced, pointing up potential flaws in their approach. She emphasized the difficulties of synchronizing their social life, as well as the possibility of one person becoming bitter if the other refused to go out. She also underlined the significance of experiencing post-divorce life truthfully, as well as the potential influence on their children if they witness them mingling with others. They emphasized the importance of informing not only their daughters, but also extended relatives and acquaintances in order to avert suspicions of infidelity. They recognized the possibility of their children blaming themselves, despite reassurances about the value of consistency in messaging and expressing love. They acknowledged the probable need for professional counseling, but remained optimistic that their resilient children would adjust. Jeff remarked that their children may receive additional grandparents from their new partners, which could result in more gifts for key occasions. However, they recognized the need of carefully coordinating events such as birthdays and holidays. Jeff also emphasized the value of discretion in their personal connections, stating that meeting partners somewhere would be preferable to bringing them home when the other parent was present with the children. They talked about the financial ramifications of having two different households, admitting that it would increase their spending. Jeff stated that they would have to adjust to managing and covering all expenses independently. He emphasized the normal practice of distributing marital assets equally in divorce cases, which includes shutting joint accounts and arranging child support arrangements. Understood. There is so much to do before the first day arrives. Darlene sat there in astonishment, unsure what to say. Jeff continued, I'll look at getting an apartment closer to my business so the girls can have a bed when they come here. On the nights I have visitation, most divorces have a conventional visitation plan that permits the non-resident spouse to see the children every weekend and every other major holiday, unless the resident parent agrees differently. Darlene was surprised that Jeff wasn't dating more frequently, considering how much he and their daughters liked spending time together despite their various hobbies. Jeff promised her that he would be as engaged in their lives as possible, but that Darlene and her partner should be prepared to take over some of the chores he presently handles. He discussed the probable difficulties of nightly visits due to school responsibilities. He also mentioned the idea of assisting a new partner's children with homework and activities, implying that Darlene may need to assist her new husband with his children as well. Jeff mentioned logistical concerns such as keeping items in two locations and transportation issues, especially if he does not reside on a bus route to their school, which could disturb their routine. Miranda told Darlene that this is not unfolding. She stated my husband would back down at the idea of divorce, promising to keep everything he did for the family while allowing me to date others on the side. Jeff, I'm losing control of the issue swiftly. I am stunned. I need some rest. We will reconvene tomorrow. I am going back to bed. You proceed. Sorry, honey, but I have something else to put down before going to bed. You understand how my thinking works. The more preparation we do before the first day, the more at ease we will be. Good night, sweetheart. Darlene barely slept. She needed to speak with Miranda and update her on Jeff's surprise response. Miranda would understand the next stages. This assurance enabled her to ultimately drop off. She awoke to start her day and realized Jeff wasn't in bed with her. My God, this moron worked all night on the divorce checklist. But when Jeff entered the kitchen, wasn't there only a notepad on the table? Darlene peered into the spare bedroom and discovered her husband sound asleep. She returned to the kitchen and began her meal while everything was cooking. She looked at her notepad and listed items under the title, Liabilities to Change. This included things like altering the mortgage, Homeowners insurance, utilities, gas, water, electricity, cable, cell phone plan, garbage service, internet, internet security, car payment, and auto insurance. Health insurance. Dental insurance, Amazon Prime, LifeLock membership, LifeFlight, and Medivac are among the options. This was on top of the banking changes they had discussed the night before. On the following page, there was a breakdown of his estimated spending for his stay in the flat, as well as a projected budget indicating how much child support she'd need to maintain her and the girl's existing lifestyle. The prediction showed a shortfall of several hundred dollars every month. 
He also discussed cost-cutting tactics, such as giving up his frequent visits to Waffle House and Starbucks, which seemed to amuse her. She also added her own expenses, such as gym membership, participation in a women's club, and eating out more than once a week. He even included some of the children's expenses, such as fees for extracurricular activities, clothes, and other necessities. The potential impact on the children was not considered in her divorce strategy. On another sheet, he specified activities for Darlene to complete, such as refilling the car, performing regular maintenance, arranging for a technician or plumber when necessary, calling for heating and air conditioning, repairs, lawn care, car washing, food shopping, and so on. She had to set aside her notepad. Darn it. Why isn't Jeff behaving appropriately and giving me what I want? I need to phone Miranda before Jeff awakens. Hello? Miranda, this is Darlene. We have to keep our voices down since Jeff is sleeping close. How did things go last night? Miranda's voice was filled with anticipation as she waited for Darlene to provide a positive report. Instead of asking how he could improve to keep me from divorcing him, he agreed to the divorce and then began outlining all of the responsibilities he currently undertakes that I would have to take over if we divorced. Jeff plans to rent an apartment and just care for the daughters on weekends. He urges that we actually separate and act as if we're divorced so that we can make an informed decision about whether to proceed with the divorce after 90 days. He does not appear to be afraid of divorce. What shall I do? Listen carefully, dumb girl. He's only attempting to manipulate you. He's not telling the truth. He's not going to sign any documents. This is a shame. He feels compelled to list all the little things he does to make you feel more reliant on him than he is on you. The basic conclusion is that you control the children and what happens between your legs. Only these two things can keep him in line. It's all talk on his end. Do not worry. Soon you and Robert will be enjoying each other in bed and you will still have a husband and a house. I hope you are accurate and Robert is worth the effort. Jeff has not taken any action yet. I'll be resolute until I know what his next move is. Thank you, Miranda. He is getting up. I have to go. Hello, Jeffrey. Would you like any coffee? Darlene asked anxiously. Her husband shuffled over to the coffee pot and commented that drinking coffee late at night was not advisable. I barely slept. Why haven't you joined me in bed? I took a walk, but I didn't trust myself. What do you mean, sweetheart? When I saw you sleeping nude, I became pretty excited. You are still the most beautiful woman I know. I am hesitant. I'm afraid that, if we do have lovemaking, it will be out of pity to assuage my agony from the divorce proposal. I wasn't sure whether I could resist. Darling, we are still married. I belong only to you, at least till we separate. Can't we behave as husband and wife until then? I am afraid not. I'm more certain than ever that separation proceedings must begin immediately although the official split will not begin until the first of the month. It effectively started on the second. You mentioned, I am unhappy. It will be difficult for me, but I truly want to see you happy, even if I am no longer a key part of your life. Darlene reassured Jeff that their separation did not need them to file for divorce. She encouraged him to relax and give her some space to explore herself, expressing optimism that they would stay married and possibly even enhance their bond. Jeff voiced uncertainty about her statements and stated his intention to take the day off to tackle division-related problems. He indicated that Billy would manage maintenance teams during the day and detailed logistical arrangements for money and accounting, emphasizing the importance of acting quickly. He also told Darlene not to be late for work since he would prepare breakfast and drive the kids to school. Later, when Robert, a charming colleague, stopped by the office to flirt with Darlene, she felt nervous but agreed to talk about listening to music together later. Her thoughts switched from her separation from Jeff to carnal moments with Robert in the elevator. When Darlene returned home from work, she saw clues that Jeff had been there during the day. Seeing this, she felt relieved and emotionally prepared to address the financial issues he had discussed. He appeared to be thinking, I have 90 days to explore, will remain married, and then I'll try to figure out how to engage in a relationship with Robert without being caught sitting down at the kitchen table. She checked her notebook once more. Jeff had added some more items to the list. However, she did notice a new list labeled Possible Women for Today. It contained two columns, women who have previously expressed interest and women who want to know if they are interested. 
While the columns were not long, the names in the first column surprised her. One of them was her sister, Erica. Darlene quickly called Erica's number. Hello, sweetie, Erica answered. How are you? How dare you try to steal my husband? Hey, girl, slow down. What is this about? Jeff compiled a list of ladies who said they wanted to date him, and your name is on it. I'm not sure about the list, but I once told him after a few too many drinks that if he ever matured and left your dumb, unappreciative self, I'd be interested in taking your place. Wait, what's going on? He is providing you with a list of women who are interested in him. Are you indicating that there's turmoil in paradise? Did you catch him or did he catch you with anyone else? That is beside the point. I simply informed him that I needed some time alone to explore new relationships here. Erica, shut her off. Yeah, you are seeking for something on the side. Who is it, or are there multiples? No, I have not been involved with anyone yet. Jeff and I are currently going through our 90-day separation period before deciding whether or not to remain married. All right. Erica accused Darlene of having a certain person in mind and showed disinterest. She questioned Darlene about their impending legal separation and cautioned that if anyone wanted to be sexual with Jeff, Darlene couldn't stop them. Erica swore to pursue Jeff herself once Darlene was legally separated, swearing unwavering loyalty to him. Darlene justified her decision to split from Jeff, claiming that it was her initiative. Despite previously complimenting him as a husband and provider, Erica called Darlene's behavior dumb and naive. Given Jeff's characteristics as a provider, husband, parent, and lover, she asked Darlene to notify her as soon as she was out of the marriage and ended the conversation after the call. Darlene attempted to calm her nerves. However, it did not help when she looked at the lists of women again. Among them was Jenny his secretary, a small, single mother who was wonderfully gorgeous but about twenty years Jeff's junior. Yet there she was, at the top of the list, expressing an interest in dating her spouse and possibly seeking a provider for herself and her child. Two other ladies were included, one of whom was married as indicated by the letter M next to her name. The remaining identities belonged to ladies who worked alongside Jeff, some of whom Darlene knew from their neighborhood. Despite having a degree in psychology, Jeff had worked as a laborer in college and had a passion for the craft. His firm has expanded to include three teams. Darlene felt he was assessing these women's plumbing abilities as well as the condition of their homes. The three anonymous ladies on the list were merely identified as a Waffle House waitress, a Starbucks barista, and a Walmart salesperson. She wondered if other women found him as desirable as Erica did. She hadn't expected him to date while they were separated, but now she wondered whether he already had someone else in mind. Jeff walked inside the house and found his wife going through a notebook. He had a sense about the approaching conversation. It appears you wasted no time finding a successor for me, my sister of all people. How could you? Darlene replied. I was only following your progress in finding a boyfriend, Jeff responded. What do you mean? I do not have a boyfriend. I simply want to explore new relationships, Darlene clarified. What about Robert Turner? Jeffrey inquired. How do you know about that? Darlene questioned Robert Turner. What are your plans today? I ran into Sylvia, your boss's secretary, in Walmart during lunch break. She is a notorious gossip. Do not believe all she says, Jeff explained after a pause. Darlene couldn't resist asking, what did she say? According to Sylvia, you are close friends with Robert Turner, one of our new partners. Apparently, he pays frequent trips to your office, and you two eat lunch together every day. I asked Darlene what was going on. Given our company's rigorous policy prohibiting office fraternization, Jeff elaborated. I mentioned that Robert is an old college friend and that we frequently hang out. That is why Sylvia believes Robert could be one of the men you were contemplating during our separation. Darlene responded, How far have you gone with your research? Jeff probed. Robert is only a friend. We have barely done anything. We just talked. I believe he might be someone I would like to date. Darlene confessed that he is always courteous to her and compliments her appearance, even when she is not looking her best. Anything else? Jeff pressed Darlene's look, which revealed the answer when she recalled the elevator scenes. Did you do anything that his wife disliked? Jeff continued. Wife? He is not married. Who told you this? Darlene exclaimed. Jeff revealed this to me on his Facebook page after some computer surfing. Is it Robert Turner? Yes, it is, 
Darlene confirmed. What about his marital status, say? Jeff asked. It states that he is married to Cynthia and has two sons, Darlene confessed. Maybe he is divorced now, she suggested. The webpage was updated three days ago. Take a look at what his wife wrote last. It appears that they are still very much together. Jeff pointed out that he had never told me he was married. I would never break up a marriage, Darlene insisted. However, it appears that you are willing to end our marriage, Jeff responded. Darlene remained silent as she recognized she had been cornered and needed time to think. Robert was the primary reason she considered ending things, but she couldn't tell Jeff about it. Well, he was only one of several men I could want to date. I can create a list just like you. She deflected. My God, I just recalled something important. If we wish to remain married after the separation, we must exchange medical records to guarantee that we are both free of carnal transmitted diseases. Jeff interjected. You are being gross right now, Darlene shot back. It's only a precaution. I hadn't planned on dating anyone, especially since it was only for 90 days. But if I have the urge, I can find someone. I'm sure you want to feel safe, too. It isn't only about you. It depends on who you're carnal with, who they've been with, and so forth. Jeff struggled to hide his delight for tightening nuts as Darlene raged. Changing the subject, he continued, Okay, dear, I promise to update you on what I did to help with the separation process today. I have a lot on my plate, and most of it begins on the first. Dealing with bank and credit card accounts is a priority right now, so you can easily access your funds. The mortgage, utilities, and other issues may be resolved within the next week. I have some positive news about funds. Did I mention that my secretary, Jenny, is a night manager at the Royal Arms? These flats are conveniently placed, so I checked about availability. They have a two-bedroom unit available, but we need to act quickly. Normally, they are fairly expensive. However, she indicated that if I become an apartment maintenance professional, I would be eligible for a 50% rent discount. This implies more money for you and your kids. You have not signed the lease yet, have you? Remember, we have 90 days, and if you play your cards correctly, you might just come back here. She pondered, remarking that his secretary is a gold digger, but decided it would escalate the matter. No, I have not yet finished the lease agreement, but I did have to explain why I was looking for an apartment. She indicated that they don't usually handle month-to-month -month rentals, but for 90 days, she could probably make an exception. When Jenny learned about the divorce, she displayed interest in me. I was surprised by the age difference and all that. I had no idea she considered me attractive. I gently rejected, citing company standards that prohibit employees and managers from engaging in anything other than professional relationships. Jenny advised she look for another employment, if that was the problem. That's why I included it in the list. Darlene was enraged, but she kept her feelings to herself since she knew they would only exacerbate the situation, without waiting for Darlene to respond. Jeff shared another bit of news that you'll likely appreciate. I booked two tickets for a 10-day trip to Hawaii. I kept it a surprise for our 20th anniversary. Darlene's demeanor flipped Hawaii 180 degrees. Jeff, you know how much I've always wanted to visit there. This is great. I'm excited to relax on the beach and swim in the water. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. However, Jeff's countenance did not match his wife's delight. We will not be going to Hawaii. When you mentioned divorce, I realized we might not make it to our 20th anniversary. When I tried to cancel and request a refund, they stated it was too late. We are only offering a 20% refund. After considerable reflection, I decided that the trip to Hawaii is more your desire than mine. I thought you might still want to travel, so I requested them to alter the tickets for you and a visitor who will be named later. It could be a terrific way to start your new relationship if you can offer your new man an all-inclusive trip to Hawaii. But Jeff, it was with you that I wanted to travel to Hawaii. We may postpone our split. In fact, now that I've had time to ponder on my life, I'm thinking about calling the whole thing off. I'm not as unhappy as I imagined. I apologize, sweetie. I've given it a lot of thought. I don't think I could be comfortable knowing the threat of divorce looms over us. Even if you cancel the divorce now, you cannot undo what you expressed desire. And I can't stop thinking about what you and Robert might have done when you weren't doing anything extraordinary. I'm likely to proceed with the divorce regardless of your decision, though I can't imagine living without you and merely being a part-time father to my daughters. Jeff then retired to the guest bedroom upstairs. Darlene was devastated. 
she only had one person to turn to. Miranda. She called. Hello, Darlene. What is wrong? Miranda? Everything's gone wrong. Jeff acquired an apartment, and his slender secretary has already started flirting with him. Even my sister wants to date him. The worst thing was that he had tickets to Hawaii for our anniversary and handed them to me to use. But he will not leave. He stated I may use them to accompany my new partner. What should I do now? Hello, what's the problem? You and Robert will have a great day in the sun. Fun and incredible lovemaking. No, I discovered out Robert is married and his wife and children will be moving here soon. I cannot. I do not want to go to Hawaii with him. I want to go with Jeff. Wait a minute. I believe I've just realized what's happening. Miranda interjected. Wow, Jeff is more clever than I gave him credit for. He claims he booked the trip years ago. It was merely a ruse to make you feel bad and postpone the divorce procedures. Don't worry. With your stunning figure, you'll quickly find boyfriends who are on par with, if not better than Robert, all while preserving your marriage and family. Oh my goodness, I never thought him to be that deceptive. He will pay for this. Thank you, Miranda. I was about to give up. He will deeply regret it. Let's chat later. Jeff descended the stairs carrying a little luggage. So you're attempting to make it appear as if you've already moved out. Don't worry. Goodbye and farewell. Actually, I was just intending to bring a few items to the flat to avoid carrying too much at once, and startled the girls. Jenny indicated that I may move some things in before the first because the place was unoccupied. In any case, your demeanor appears to have changed since before, let me guess. You were chatting with your marital guru. Miranda is a divorce guru. That was all she could manage. Do not try to provoke me by disrespecting Miranda. She is on my side. She got onto your Hawaii ticket plan. You manufactured the story to force me to give up everything. Nice try. I still want a divorce and can't wait to get it finalized. There are lots of guys that want me and are willing to accommodate my desires. You are completely correct, especially with the attention you will receive from other men. I have no doubt you will receive countless offers once they learn you are available. I've always considered myself extremely fortunate to have such a beautiful lady as you, a wonderful partner in raising our children, and until recently a devoted wife and lover. You're misinformed about the Hawaii vacation and I can prove it. Just call Lois Simpson at the Flight Right Travel Agency. I'll call her now. Hello, Lois. It's Jeff Sinclair again. My wife is on speakerphone, so you may tell her about the trip. She has a few inquiries, as expected. Jeff, I am so sorry you won't be able to attend. It appears that you were sincerely looking forward to surprising your wife and enjoying your vacation. What specifications do you require, Mrs. Sinclair? Darlene demanded. Could you please explain exactly what is included in this trip? Certainly. This is our 10-day adventure across two islands. It includes accommodations at our top-rated hotels, food, transportation, hula lessons, luau dinners, traditional tiki performances, surfing, swimming, and dancing, all in a romantic setting. Many couples have described it as a transforming experience for their marriage. When did your husband initially plan this trip? Darlene was convinced this would expose her. Let us check. According to our records, he asked about it roughly three months ago and made his decision for this particular trip two months ago, with payment made two weeks later. He contacted us yesterday to cancel the booking, which resulted in a 20% return. I was astonished when he mentioned that you may still go find another companion. That reveals a lot about the type of husband he is. You are quite fortunate. Any more questions? We will need the other person's name to book the flight tickets. No more questions. Darlene answered. I'll get back to you soon with the name. She attempted to predict Miranda's response based on this information. After a little moment, it clicked. You believe you have outsmarted me once more, don't you? You and Lois planned to concoct this Hawaii trip narrative before I even discussed divorce. Okay, I get it now. She was proud of herself for completing her deduction without Miranda's assistance. Jeff threw out a deep sigh and advised you speak with your folks. What do my parents have to do with this? Who do you suppose will look after the girls while we are away? Fine, let us call them, Darlene responded, taken off guard. There's no need to rush in there. I'm already dialing, Jeff said. But Jeff, her mother, answered the phone and recognized the caller's number. Darlene, how are the girls? Glad you called. Hello, Mom. Darlene greeted hesitantly. Mom, this is Jeff. We are on speakerphone. Hold on, let me get Dad to, Darlene said, hearing her father's voice in the background. Harold, it's Jeff and Darlene. Pick up, honey. What's going on, guys? 
Harold entered the conversation after Darlene stayed mute. Jeff voiced his opinion. Darlene already knows, so there's no need to keep it a secret, son. We are sorry you are unable to attend. You did not say why when you called earlier. I hope it's not a health issue. We were saddened when you called this morning and said we would not babysit the girls for your Hawaii trip. We were looking forward to having them with us for ten days, and we felt horrible for Darlene that you couldn't accompany her. We know she wants to go, but she would rather go with you than anyone else. Darlene, have you determined who you're going to take? It'll be difficult for whoever stays, her father remarked. No, Mom, I have not made a decision yet. How long ago did Jeff tell you about the Hawaii trip? I'm not certain. Harold, do you recall? Was it around New Year's? Almost certain. Two or three months prior. He mentioned it early so that we could stock up on munchies. These two can eat anything without gaining weight, her mother stated. Jeff, Darlene's mother, intervened, concerned. Is everything all right with Darlene? Why are you inquiring when Jeff spoke with us? Did anything happen between the two of you? God, did you split up? Darlene's mother inquired. No, ma'am, not quite. We agreed we needed some space, some time away to refuel our marriage and perhaps reconcile. Darlene explained. I am not going to lie to your parents. They've always been honest with me, Jeff interrupted. Mom, Darlene started. I did not intend to cause alarm. I meant to say that the first step in the divorce procedure is a 90-day separation. I'm hoping that this time will help me discover myself pursue new possibilities, and improve myself so that I can be a better wife and mother. And it is coming from me, mother. Harold said something. I can recognize liberal lies when I hear them. Darlene, do you have a side boyfriend? No, father, no, not at all. Darlene denied that Jeff pondered speaking up but ultimately decided against it. Harold persisted as his wife's cries resonated in the background. I can't believe you would do something like that. We did a better job raising you. I'm really disappointed. Don't expect us to be courteous to your new man, Darlene. We sincerely apologize, Jeff. At the very least, assure us that we will be able to see our grandchildren following the divorce. Darlene interrupted Jeff in the middle of her cries. Jeff has inflated this entire situation out of proportion. I take back what I said. There is no divorce, no separation. I'll chat to you later when things have calmed down. Jeff urged Darlene, who was in tears. You need to gather yourself. The girls will return home soon. He took his suitcase and went to the door. Where are you heading? Did not you hear? I don't want a divorce. You do not have to travel any place. She was pleading. You unilaterally declared that you want a divorce without first consulting me. Now you believe you can unilaterally proclaim that we will not divorce since things are not going as planned. You don't seem to comprehend that. I possess a voice based on what I've learned about you over the previous week. I'm not sure that giving up on divorce is a wise decision. I will take a sleeping bag from the garage and spend the night in the flat. Jeff, please do not depart. I apologize. You stated it was fine before I brought up the bullshit about getting a divorce. Can we simply get over it and go back to the way things were? You said you were happy. I was really thrilled as well. But I'll never forget how you said you were unhappy and planned to have an affair with Robert. As I already stated, you have already engaged in infidelity. Sally remarked that she could easily create the divorce papers because the terms were common. She might even feed them tomorrow. I won't sign them. Darlene reacted harshly. That doesn't matter. Sally only needs to make sure you are formally served. She might do it in your office to ensure that there are many witnesses. Perhaps Robert could claim affectional estrangement. I could even serve your boss for breaking business rules. But that is going too far. I need you to be able to care for the girls when we divorce. I know. I will speak with Robert's wife. That should serve for recompense. Why are you treating me so harshly? I adore you. You also love me. Is there anything I can do to set things right? You stated divorce would be hard on both of us. Don't you wish to escape this suffering? I swear not to bring up this divorce situation again. Please stay and we'll work it out. Darlene appealed with tears. Jeff remained motionless and mute. Darlene felt like she had made an impact. I swear to be the world's best wife. I refuse to look at another man. I've given you nearly 20 years of a solid marriage, two great children, and unwavering support for your business, even if it meant you came home late and dirty. I'm quite proud of your accomplishments. Everyone makes errors. Please allow me one more chance. Please. 
Darlene implores. Finally, Jeff replied, I'll tell you what. I will take my suitcase and sleeping bag to the apartment. I'll have you write down a few things. Your comments and deeds have caused me more sorrow than you understand. If your comments match my expectations, I may decide to cancel or postpone the divorce. I'll be back by 7 o'clock. You might think about sending the youngsters to their parents or pals, so we may talk freely. Yes, yes, many thanks. What am I supposed to write? First and foremost, I expect an apology for creating this whole scenario. And I want you to make a plea alongside me. Not just ask, but beg my forgiveness. Second, ask Robert to stop contacting you. Any ramifications if he continues. Inform him that if he does not comply, I will pursue legal action against him and your company. Third, list all of the reasons why I should consider staying married to you. Finally, phone Miranda and tell her you never want to communicate with her again. This is something that cannot be negotiated. If I hear about Miranda's input again, I will leave right away. Do you understand what I'm asking? If you wish to give us a chance at saving our marriage? Yes, my dear, I think so. I will do everything and be ready by seven. Very nicely. I will see you at seven. Jeff grabbed a suitcase and departed. Darlene concentrated on the last task on the list. She spoke to Miranda mentally, practicing her words. Listening to you was my worst mistake. Because of you, I nearly lost all I cared about. Do not contact me by phone, text, email, or even think about me if we happen to cross paths in public. Stay away or I will not be held accountable for my actions. I was surprised by her relief after addressing Miranda. Darlene called Robert to transmit Jeff's instructions. She recalled his desperate request to meet one final time at the motel, turning to insults and charges of her inadequacy thereby shutting him down. She threatened to involve his wife if he continued to cause issues. The anticipated challenge of listing reasons why Jeff should stay married proved to be the easiest. Darlene, freed from wanting more than she had with Jeff, reminisced on the delights they enjoyed. She developed a whole list in the hopes of impressing Jeff and showing regret for the divorce ruse. She recognized how dumb, self-centered, and arrogant I was. Never again. Darlene felt prepared and confident as the clock approached seven o'clock. However, when the hour came and Jeff had not returned, a tinge of worry crept in. He resurfaced five minutes later, but without his luggage. His expression has not changed since he departed earlier. Darlene tried to stay kind and humble while handing him her responses. Here are my responses. I hope you rethink. Jeff perused the list for an extended period of time. The sight of him crying brought tears to his eyes. Darlene began to cry as well, taking his emotional outburst as a sign of hope. Dark. This is extremely impressive, he said. As she rose to embrace him, Darlene's heart fluttered with hope, but he motioned for her to stay seated. Your efforts are admirable, but I doubt you realize how much agony you have given me. He indicated that he fears he will have to proceed with the divorce. Darlene was completely crushed. It was as if her heart had been shattered and collapsed to the floor. She sobbed hysterically, her sadness lowering her to unknown depths. She lamented in sorrow. I've ruined my family's lives. I'm the absolute worst person alive. I do not deserve to be alive. How could I have been so naive? Jeff knelt before her and whispered, You now understand how I felt. Jeff neared the door but halted, looking back at Darlene, who was still crying on the floor. Are we allowed to visit other individuals when we are separated? I am overcome with emotion. Darlene struggled to answer. Her tears were making it difficult for her to speak. If dating other people is acceptable, what are your plans for Friday night? Do you want to have dinner and watch a movie? Jeff had made a proposal. You're asking me out on a date. Darlene let out an exclamation. Yes, I believe we've irreversibly altered our previous relationship, but perhaps we can start over. He proposed with new hope. Darlene charged towards Jeff. Here's the next story. It seemed insane that my life had transformed in one night and that I had to go through such a horrible event, all because I had gotten too close to a famous actor at the club. I had no idea he would react so negatively. But this was my first time seeing an actor. Plus, all of the cocktails I'd consumed had gotten to me, causing me to make a major error. I'd suffered greatly as a result of it. My friends had asked me to a club because it had been a difficult week and they knew I needed to unwind. 
but they had no idea I would unwind too much and wish I could go back in time. I never would have gone to the club with them. I followed my buddies since I needed to forget about my difficulties for a while. When I arrived at the club, the music and vibe were exactly what I needed. I wasn't expecting everything to literally go wrong. My companions had gotten a table in the club's VIP section. I didn't know how they did it. It was only my responsibility to follow them around and drink all of the beverages since I deserved them. So I'd followed them into the VIP section, where the drinks simply kept flowing. Not long after, I was very drunk. The music had gotten to me, and I was having the time of my life. My friends then began talking and pointed to a private area of the VIP section. I joined in the discussion and discovered that the person they were pointing to was a local star who had just entered the club with a handful of his entourage. I had no idea celebrities visited clubs, or at least the one my buddies and I had gone to, so I was thrilled to see one. I just wanted to get a better look at who it was. I hadn't seen a celebrity in person before, so I did what most of you would have done. I told my friends I was going to the bathroom. Meanwhile, I was going to try if I could get in via the clubbers and past his crew. If I could get a good look at his face, I could market that. I had spotted a celebrity. I mean, if it had been you, you would have done exactly what I did. Perhaps you would have stopped there when the guy's security detail kicked you out. But I chose to be persistent. And what I planned to do got me into a lot of trouble. Well, not at first. But don't judge me. After I was booted out... I returned to my pals and saw that they had ordered more drinks. They were no longer interested in the star, although I am not sure why. It was still troubling me to find out who this individual was. I drank with my friends and devised a scheme that would lead to problems. I drank three shots for courage, my first error, and made my way to the section where the star and his entourage were drinking and dancing. I joined in with the dance. I have no idea how I managed to blend in. To be honest, everything was a fog in my thoughts. I made it in, drank some liquid courage, and danced close the gentleman, who turned out to be a well-known actor. I didn't waste any time shooting photos, and one of the security guards grabbed me and crushed my phone. That was the point at which everything went wrong. I began yelling at the top of my lungs and saying things I can't remember as I recount this incident. However, they had been bad. They had just destroyed my phone while I was going through a difficult time in my life, and they believed they could get away with it. I caused a scene at the bar, and the management had to haul me out, and my buddies followed suit, and we were barred from returning, all because of a silly actor. Now fast forward four months. The same actor was suing me for defamation of character, extortion, bribery, and posting an image obtained legally, among other things, lol. You may be asking how I became involved in all of these allegations after my phone was damaged. Well, there is something called iCloud, but it was beside the point. Why was I still with this actor four months later? The million dollar question. I had sold the actor's photos to news websites and used them to extort him. I was desperate and had let my power to get the best of me. Hello, my name is Lois. I'm using my grandmother's name because I've read stories on this site and no one uses their true name to describe their experiences. Anyway, I'm 26 years old and I've managed to be disowned, wreck my life, and lose a lot of my parents' money all in the span of six months. From the time the clock struck 12 midnight on New Year's Day, I knew this would not be my year. But I had remained optimistic. What could I have done that was so outrageous? I done a lot of things and I'm coming here to share my feelings, hoping you won't judge. It doesn't really matter what you say to me. You do not know anything about my life. So the night after I managed to get my friends barred from one of America's most exotic clubs, my life only got worse from there. I won't say where I live in case you all decide to go crazy and hate mail me. I had no phone. I had just been let go from my job. This was the root cause of my bad day. My ex-boyfriend's sister cursed me for allegedly breaking her brother apart. Anyway, that night ended up being the worst, so I swore I was going to exact my revenge on the stupid celebrity and make sure he bought back my phone. I was hurt, and I didn't like the injustice that had been done to me. Sure, I had intruded on his personal space, but all I wanted was some pictures. So I contacted the actor by email. I'm not going to say his name here because you'll be able to figure out who it is. 
I emailed the actor and told him that his security details had destroyed my phone because I had wanted to take a few pictures with him and that I no longer had a phone and that he should take action. After a day, two days, a week, and two weeks, I still hadn't heard back from said actor. I was incensed. I didn't have a source of income that would allow me to purchase the phone I had previously used. Despite having a degree, I was broke and working in a cafe shop. My parents weren't talking to me because, according to my mother, I was a good-for-nothing because I didn't take advantage of the opportunity they gave me. They were upset with me because I cheated on my boyfriend, who wanted to marry me, and did so in a cruel manner. What I had done was not so bad. I just dumped him at the wedding altar after he spent all of his savings on the wedding I had always dreamed of. Then, two days later, he discovered me in bed with the plumber who came to fix our drainage while we were supposed to be on our honeymoon. But it wasn't my fault. I had told him I did not want to marry, at that exact moment. I was still working on organizing my life, and he goes behind my back, planning a wedding with my friends and family, thinking it will impress me. He was the one who was surprised when I jilted him on the altar. I disliked him, and to be honest, I'd been cheating on him since our one-year anniversary. This was why his sister had been calling me every two weeks to heap insults upon me. I don't regret my actions, but I do regret how I went about it. It had been horrific to watch my ex-boyfriend's face. As I said, no on the wedding altar. This was someone that I had been dating since college. Anyway, that's beside the point. I just wanted to give you people some backstory into how karma messed me up. It was all my fault, and I take full responsibility of it. I was a menace, and I didn't care who I had hurt. I had fallen out of love with him. And instead of me to break it off, I had kept on with the relationship because my ex-boyfriend provided things for me that my parents stopped providing for me because I refused to put my degree to use and look for a job. I had been spoiled right from time to cut my story short. My parents had given me everything I wanted from the day I was born. Up till I graduated college, and once I was done, they refused to fund my lifestyle any longer. So I had turned to my boyfriend, whom we had started dating in college. There was nothing that he wouldn't have done for me, but I had thrown that all away and taken it for granted. I had started cheating on him two years into our relationship when he would go out to work. I didn't find him attractive anymore, so our sex life had dwindled, and I had found excitement with the plumber. Truth be told, I might have led my boyfriend on for longer if he hadn't proposed marriage to me and spoiled everything. I hadn't wanted to be bound by marriage. With all these things that happened last year, I broke things off with him in front of our friends and family and broke his heart. And he turned into the villain right before my eyes. After I broke things off with my ex, I think that was six months ago. My parents refused to even look my way from then on, and most of my friends hated me, except the ones that didn't know I had a boyfriend to begin with. I was forced to go and look for work, and I was so terrible at it that I lost it and had to drink and had a run-in with the famous actor and his security detail. And my life is in shambles now. So this was how everything led to this point. The point where the actor has refused to answer my emails, where he would get me my phone. I had already used up the last salary I had gotten on groceries and rent. I was staying with one of my friends, part of the ones that didn't know I had a boyfriend and almost got married and all that shit. I hadn't known this was how my life was going to turn out. So after paying my friend the last rent, after owing her past the due date and buying groceries, I was broke to get myself a new phone and I didn't know who else to ask for the money, so it was disturbing the actor's email. That was my last resort. Apparently, it turned out to not be my last resort, LOL. Luckily, or should I say unluckily for me, my friend had just changed her phone and she gave me her old one with the promise to pay her back for it. Of course, I logged into my iCloud and found the pictures I had taken off the famous actor drunk off his ass, of course, and an evil plot grew in my head. I mean, he wasn't answering my emails and texts, and because of him, my phone had been smashed and he refused to take responsibility of his actions— or at least responsibility of his security details, action. So I had to resort to other means. I found something for him to respond to LOL. I sent the picture to the email I had been sending messages to for over four weeks and said if I didn't get a response within a day, I was going to post the picture to a blog site. Guess what? I got a response before two hours LOL. That had been the fastest reply I had ever gotten from them, and it showed that they had been reading my emails and had decided to ignore them. 
But now that I had the upper hand, they had to answer me. And can you imagine what whoever was handling this actor's email had told me that I should delete the picture or I wouldn't like the consequences of my actions? Instead of trying to negotiate how to get me a new phone and pay for the damages they had caused me, the person resorted to threatening me. Would you blame me for taking action into my own hands at this point? No, because I'm sure you all reading this would have been as livid as I was. Anyway, I wrote down what I thought of them and what they could do with their consequences, and told them that if I didn't see a similar $5,000 in my account, I was going to sell off the pictures. I gave them two days to pay in the money, and also let them know that I had plenty where the pictures had come from, and I had also used an untraceable IP address to send the message so they couldn't track me if they wanted to. I don't know how I had the bravery and guts to say like that. I don't even know how I had grown smart enough to conceive of stuff like an untraceable IP address and all that crap. I guess I wasn't as dumb as my parents expected me to be, LOL. The actor's email handler answered within 24 hours again. Yep, they wired the sum of $10,000 to me and demanded I erase the picture, which I did. I swear on my life that I did, haha, -ha, but I had just erased the one I had given to them. I hadn't erased the others that I had taken. Plus, you know how it works with iCloud. Something can never completely be removed. At least I believe that I pocketed my money, gave my roommate back her phone, and acquired a new phone for myself. With ten grand, I could live okay. For some months or so, I thought. You know that thing about blackmailers? Yeah. The thing where they always come back for more? Yes, I went back for more, but I only went back for more when the blackmailer had become the blackmail. Yeah. A funny twist of fate. That is a summary of my life over the past few months. Karma. The bitch came to visit and knocked on my door as if she knew her visit was overdue. Elmo, I may be laughing now as I recall the incident, but it wasn't funny at the time. My ex-boyfriend decided to exact revenge on me by demanding all of the money he had spent on me while we were dating, as well as the amount he had spent on the wedding. I mean, who does that? It had been six months or more. Then couldn't he just forgive and forget? Apparently he couldn't. He could not have left me alone. This is why I had to tell you my backstory, because it can only get funnier from here. I received a call from him one day while I was still enjoying the ten grand, and he told me that I had done enough damage in his life, that he was tired of making excuses for me, and that he was going for my jugular. I was astounded that he had the gall to even call me. We'd reached an impasse, so why couldn't he just rest and leave me alone? I'd accepted responsibility for my mistakes. So during the call, my ex-boyfriend decided to blackmail me. He apparently had photos of me naked with the plumber. He knew I was cheating on him all along, but he wanted to overlook it because he loved me, and he was done. I've never been more surprised. I couldn't believe it. Then he sent me the pictures and threatened that if I didn't return the money he spent on the wedding, he'd send it to my father and wouldn't stop there. He intended to send it to every top official who knew my parents, as well as to the blogs. The daughter of the popular asterisk. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. High earners battling it out with help. These were the headlines that would have made the news. It's time for another backstory. My parents were wealthy and had a long-standing reputation among my great-grandparents. I can't say in which field they had a good reputation because it would become public. Who my parents are. Lowell. I had to give it to my former partner. He stayed true to his word. He aimed for the throat. I didn't mind what my parents thought of my reputation. It was already ruined in their eyes after I decided to get a job after college LOL. I even forgot to mention that I turned down a job offer that my father had gotten for me. So if it was just my reputation that was ruined in their eyes, I would not have fallen for my ex. However, it was not only my reputation at stake. My parents' reputations were also on the line and I couldn't just sit on the sidelines and let it happen. They would not have been able to raise their heads, and their stock would have plummeted. Or a single business issue. I couldn't take that chance, because if I got into serious trouble, I'd need them. My ex-boyfriend made a serious threat. I knew he was serious when he sent me the picture. My ex never started something he couldn't finish. He was straightforward, and meant exactly what he said. I was scared, and that's how I started making mistakes. I asked him how much he had spent on the wedding, trying to sound casual and unconcerned, and he told me 100 grand. 
He had spent a whopping hundred grand on a wedding, and I had dumped him at the altar. According to him, that was his savings, which he intended to use to start a business. But he had taken everything away from me because he believed I was worth it. But he was glad he hadn't gotten married to me because I would have made his life miserable. The point of his phone call was to crush me, scare me, and tell me to send him money, which I refused because I couldn't afford to pay him a hundred grand for something I had told him I didn't want. Was this my fault? Was it appropriate for him to demand that I pay for something I didn't want? But Karma wanted to play pranks on me, which he had taken advantage of. How was I going to get a hundred thousand? This is what I had asked him, but my ex did not seem to care. You told me he was giving me a month to get the money or he was going to release the photos to my parents all over the world. And he knew my father's heart was already frail. He intended to kill my father. I had no option. I told you all at the start of this story not to judge me because you never know what you would have done or defended if you were in my situation. So I went back to what I had promised not to do. I was desperate, and desperate times demand desperate measures. So I returned to blackmail the actor. In retrospect, I had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted to make everything easier because it was becoming too much for me, and I couldn't ask my parents for the money because they would rather die than give me the money. Even though they had no idea it was for their own good in the end, I had to resort to the actor whom I had promised not to blackmail again. But I didn't want it to appear that it was the same person who had blackmailed them before, so I'd used a different email address. The pictures, on the other hand, confirmed that it was still me because they were the same. I sent the email and I believe I forgot to use an untraceable address because I was desperate and forgot I could be tracked. I convinced myself that an actor could afford to pay a few hundred thousand dollars, so I demanded two hundred thousand dollars. I realized I went too far and made my first mistake. But I saw an opportunity that I wanted to seize. I had no idea when I'd get something that would allow me to retire for at least the next two years if I performed well. My mouth had salivated at the prospect, but life told me that I couldn't have it both ways. I mentioned the sum to the actor's handler. I received Google Me calls all night. When I didn't pick up, I received an email the next morning informing me that the actor wanted to invite me to his mansion to discuss the terms of my blackmail. LOL, as if I hadn't seen a threat to shut me up before. I responded by saying that I needed the money to shut up, or else I would post that picture on the internet, putting the actor in trouble. You might be wondering why an actor would try to keep a picture of himself having a good time at a club with drinks and people around him off the internet LOL. I was wondering the same thing after my first blackmail scheme worked, so I did some random googling and discovered that said famous actor was supposed to avoid the bottle in clubs after it was discovered that he was an alcoholic. The actor issued an apology and stated that he would not drink again. His career nearly ended as a result of the gossip, and now I had proof that he broke his word. So this is why they wanted to get rid of any evidence I had and keep me quiet. All I asked for was a few hundred thousand dollars. I hadn't even asked for a half million, but I had lost everything in the end. I declined the meeting and gave them three days to deposit the money in my account. He was a famous person. He was supposed to have that kind of money to hand out to protect his reputation, right? Well, he had the money because of his handler, agent, or whatever they're called. I've been calling it Handler LOL. His handler sent me an email with the attached file. The file contained a contract that stated that I would delete the picture and not blackmail them again, or else they would take legal action against me. I was instructed to sign with my real name and return it to them, or they would not release the funds I had requested. This was where I went wrong because I could have simply said duck them and sold the image to a blog looking for the hottest story. But I hadn't considered that. My ex had already blown up my phone and started a countdown for me, and I had just considered all the things I could do with the money. So I signed the contract, they wired the money to my account, and I thought all my problems were solved. I thought that was the end because I had wired the money to my ex and told him not to call my phone again. I was free and could live my life with the extra dollar 200 grand I had earned from my scheme. I could live lavishly and not worry about working. I was happy. Karma was counting down the minutes for me, and I was laughing like a maniac while drinking Chardonnay. It didn't take long before everything exploded in my face. Apparently, my ex hadn't moved on from what I did to him even after I gave him the $100,000 he had requested. He still insists I owe him something. 
and that was the leg he used to return to my life, demanding more money. I gave him the money he requested because I had it send him a very long emotional message informing him that what he was doing was wrong, after everything my parents had done for him, and this time, I blocked his number and changed mine. If he wanted to ruin my parents' lives, I didn't give him suits. I figured I could make do with what I had. However, due to my reckless spending, the funds were quickly depleted. This was something I had never considered possible in my life. I never imagined that 200 grand could vanish in the blink of an eye until I experienced it. I was broke before I could spell Jack, and I had no idea what else to do. A month later, my friend was threatening to evict me for rent and my share of the groceries. This was someone who had followed me around to spend my money, but if there was a problem with rent, the witch was ready to kick me out. I began desperately looking for money, and I remembered meeting a blogger or whatever they were called. I went to dinner one night. She had been complaining that she didn't have a story to tell and was about to lose her job. Once again, I made a decision as if I lacked the ability to think. And this was the beginning of my downfall. I called the blogger because we had exchanged contact information and told her I had a story for her, but she needed to be willing to pay a high price for it. I told her the story was interesting and that I had forgotten about it. A contract bound me. I was desperate again when the blogger offered me $150,000, and she said the highest she could give me was $50,000. Apparently her boss wouldn't be able to pay that much for a story, so she was going to add her own money to it. I wound up selling it to her for $50,000. Yes, I was a fool. I was not just foolish. The story spread before the actor became aware of it and sued the news organization. That was when the blogger sold me out. They shut down the story before it could sell and spread to others. If not, you'd have realized what I was talking about. Well, if you live where I do, everything is outlined in the contract that I signed. But I did not keep it. This is how I had it. I saw myself arraigned in court because on a ladies' night I went all out on a famous actor and photographed him, which got me in serious trouble. I was seriously in trouble. I was at home when the cops knocked on my door. I suppose it wasn't that difficult to find me because I had been careless about leaving a traceable IP address, which they had tracked down using my account number. I had left so many gaps unfilled, and now I was facing the consequences. The police informed me that I was being arrested for extortion, providing false information that resulted in character defamation, and violating a contract agreement. All of these charges were incurred because I did not know when to quit. I was desperately in need of money. I did not work for them, and now I'd stuck my hand in something I couldn't get out of. The actor sued me in court for breach of contract, and my phone was seized and the photos were deleted. I had no idea how serious my situation was until the police told me to contact my lawyer or request a public defender. This was the point at which I realized I was in big trouble. I had no one to call and couldn't tell my parents. I wasn't expecting them to come to my aid. The police didn't give me much time to think before handing me over to a public attorney because I hadn't called anyone or returned home. However, my parents found out quickly after my friend called them. She had been present when the cops came to take me away. I went to court and was read the charges again. Everything seemed surreal, and it felt like an out-of-body experience when I was in court because I couldn't believe I'd ever be in the position I was in at the time. My lawyer could only persuade me to pay a $3 million bail or face three years in prison because I was facing extortion, bribery, and defamation, as well as a wealthy individual with some influence. Yes, I had no case to defend because I had violated a contract. My lawyer couldn't save my buttocks, so I was forced to pay the fine or go to prison. I couldn't go to prison. I had to return. My parents and I agreed that if they did this for me, I would be responsible and never bother them again in life. When I begged, my mother shook her head and looked at me with sadness. I knew what was going on in her head. She could not believe she had raised someone like me. I couldn't believe it was me either. My father agreed to pay the three million dollars fine, but he disowned me first. He told me that he couldn't bear the thought of me giving him another headache and that he was over me. And from this point forward, I was dead to him. I had overheard them whispering to themselves. He'd been telling my mother that I needed to mature, and I'd been spoiled my entire life. I thanked my father, who walked out of the courtroom. I've never seen my father until now, as I recount my ordeal. 
This was the result of my stupidity and foolishness, combined with what my father had said that day. I'd been spoiled to believe that the world would revolve around me. I learned my lesson. I had learned my lesson. Redditors. I had bitten more than my mouth could chew, and the results were unexpected. What I wished for was that my parents and ex-partner could both forgive me, because I'm not sure if it was the karma of what I'd done that was ruining my life. I hope they forgave me because I regret my actions, and I sincerely apologize to the actor I had planned to exploit for my own selfish reasons. Update. Hello, Redditors. I am back in this space. I decided to come on here and confess my wrongdoings in order to let go of whatever was holding me back. I never expected to reactivate my account again, but I wanted to see what was going on in this part of the web and how my experience was going. You're definitely a funny bunch. Someone in the comments called me a child who needed to grow up. Someone else claimed that karma hadn't even dealt with me well, and that I needed to have lost something more valuable before feeling remorseful for what I had done. So, in response to these comments, I decided to provide you with an update so you could express your gratitude. Well, I'd done a lot of growing up since this event, and losing my parents and being disowned taught me that I needed to get serious about my life. Nobody else was there for me except myself. So I've decided to make a formal apology to both the actor and my parents. I truly apologize, and I learned my lesson. To my parents, I am working on improving my life as an actor— I hope I didn't make your life any more difficult or complicated. I hope you can forgive me if I contributed to making your life worse than it was. I'm slowly rebuilding my life. I'm going to deactivate my account on here, and I hope you can learn something from what I went through. Thank you for taking the time to hear today's story. If you enjoyed this story, please like it and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have a story to tell about your or someone else's situation, please don't hesitate to contact me. Please take care.